Hello, Keith and Steve here again at Rock Island Auctions, and today we've got another cool gun from the vault. And I mean, this is steampunk before steampunk ever was a thing. The original steampunk. Absolutely. This is a gun I've wanted to get my hands on for over 30 years. Um, this is a 1893 Bittner repeating pistol. And I saw one of these on the cover of the Gun Collector's Digest way back in the 18, or the 19, excuse, I'm not that old, the 1980s. He just dated I himself right it was. there. Yeah. And what this is, 1893, you know, the, the broom handle Mauser hasn't come out yet. John Browning is kicking around uh, how he wants to make his 38 automatic, you know, rotary barrel, tilting barrel, what have you, parallel ruler. And a guy named Bittner, Gustav Bittner, came up with the repeating pistol, which would uh, predate just slightly these automatic designs, these uh, Johnny-come-latelys. And I think the idea was you work the action with this lever here. You have a rotary bolt, which has one lug on it, which is plenty. It fires a roughly a 31 caliber black powder cartridge that's straight wall. Um, but I think the idea was with black powder, repeating cartridge, you wanted a manual action to make sure the thing was going to work every time. I don't think uh, this guy believed <laughs> that a semi-auto pistol was going to be the way to go. Now, the fascinating thing about this is it paralleled the development of some of the Steyr designs as mm -hmm. far as magazines. So if you look in here, it's got a follower in there, and what you would do was take a clip of cartridges, an unblock clip, put her down in there, and the top of the clip had the feed ramp, or the, the feed lips, mm -hmm. to guide the cartridges in. And this little knob down here was if you wanted to release it early without shooting all the cartridges. Uh, you could take it out the top, or once you got done shooting all the cartridges, it would fall out of the bottom, just like the rifles did. So that was state of the art back then, with the 95 Styres, for example and the uh, 88 commission rifle, oh, yeah. things like that. So you're probably wondering what is so exciting about a uh, five or six shot repeating gun with a 32 caliber, 31 caliber black powder cartridge when you could have gotten a revolver of the same uh, power, if not more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, this was paving the way for the automatic pistol though. The idea of, of loading in a clip of some kind or a magazine, the ideas of um, having a barrel with one chamber instead of multiple chambers in a cylinder. Um, and let's face it, some people just like gadgets too. And to make it more complicated, it's just fun for some of the European designers. And not only is the mechanism worthwhile, let, let's, show, let's show how it works, just real quick. Um, this closes the action, and if you'll watch, you can see the bolt rotate as it goes in. Now, I've, I've used this handy hook here because that allows you to close the action all the way without activating the trigger. If you want to shoot this as a double action revolver would be shot, you can take it and just leave your finger in the loop, and it automatically fires. The other thing is it has a little safety right here. A push button safety just like on your Remington 870. A lot of features. It's got a uh, sight graduated to, if I can read this right, 150 meters, something like that. That's what it looks like, yes. And that's pretty optimistic. <laughs> but I think that was looked at as a uh, desirable trait in European guns. A yeah. lot of them came with, with sights like that. But as far as aesthetics go. The woodwork and color casing on this is just beautiful in person. I hope some of it shows up on camera. And this gun is surprisingly comfortable to, sh to hold. Mm -hmm. It's steady to hold. Uh, this swell up top really helps a lot. It just anchors it in your hand. It lets it seat down deep. And it's got a lanyard loop uh, so you don't lose the thing. Um, I think it was looked at as a possible service type gun. Yeah, I mean, it's, the grip of it 
is Webley style. I mean, Very revolver so. style is comfortable. Late 1800s for firearms development had to have been a, an amazing time to have been around because this design, Mauser's designs, Luger's, Brochart's, it's just amazing at what all was coming out of there I and mean, what when, was... When you look at this, you know you're just this close mm -hmm. to semi-auto pistols. Yes, yep, they were right on the cutting edge and then once it took off, but this was just amazing seeing what all and what they were thinking whenever they were developing this. Do you see the right, work the on, on, yeah, the matting on top of the barrel, re reduce the, any glare off of it? But it's really lightweight. Too. Yeah. And to see something like this, I mean, you would think that it'd be in the movies or especially if you've ever seen the series Firefly. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That was really cool. I mean, this would look like something that was on there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's futuristic and it's old too. So it's just, that's, that is so cool. Oh, and if you're wondering why it has a, uh, a fore end, so to speak, there, that those wooden panels, they're covering up a spring and follower mechanism. That follower that goes up to your on-block clip to lift the mm -hmm. cartridges, that's got a spring on there. It's just a long arm is all it is. So when you look down the, t the t pipe here, yep. that's all there is, is that follower. There's a little lever just coming right up. Yep. Just like uh, a lot of designs in the yeah. in the rifle world. Yep, it's just pretty slick. When you consider it's over a uh, hundred years old, especially, they took the technology to its limit there. <laughs> yeah. And I think the color casing added strength and durability to the design. But it is a uh, and it's striker fire. Yeah, you know, that's way before cutting edge right now. <laughs> Everybody's going striker fire. Fired. This is a pretty cool gun. Yeah. So my long wait is finally over. I have seen it. And it did not disappoint me in the least. If you ever get a chance to look at one of these, whether it's at an auction or a museum, or if you have a rich relative that owns one, don't, uh, don't pass, pass That's the right. opportunity up. It's amazing at the work that went into this. 7.7 yeah. .7 caliber. I mean... That's something that sticks in your memory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, we'd like to thank the folks here at Rock Island Auction House for letting us look at this very rare piece. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you know anything about this gun, or if you see design elements you're wondering about, leave us a comment below and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we bring you another gun. From, from the, the vault. vault.